Hey everyone and especially Ward 4 residents. Uh, this morning I have the pleasure of bringing to you uh, Sana Stolte, uh, a current Ward 4 counselor and we're gonna have just a few dialogue uh, get to know her so, better. So uh, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Also about yourself, where do you live, what do you do uh, for fun so that the audience know where they can find you. Well if you want to find me when I'm not at City Hall or out in Ward 4 you're likely gonna find me on the Bruce Trail because I head to the woods. The woods are my happy place. That's where I feel the most calm and that's where I relax. So hiking is my jam. Awesome. <laughs> and you are a Ward 4 residence, right? I am. I raised my girls up on Hannibal, which is just off Palmer in North Ward 4. And now I live on Glencrest in the Tecumseh community of Ward 4. Wow. Could you tell us why you decided first not to run and decide to run again? Sure, sure. I know that that possibly could have been confusing on behalf of the community. And I just want to say that I'm actually going to spend some time this weekend putting a more in-depth explanation on my website. So if anyone wants to read it, they can, because I know we don't have time to go into the whole thing today. 2022 was a challenging year as far as myself putting motions forward towards council and putting initiatives forward towards council that I thought were really important for the community that caused a lot of strife shall we say yeah. <laughs> um, and just the result of that experience really left me wondering whether I was affecting change in the community and whether I was doing the work from you know whether being a counselor was the role of which I could best affect change in our community or whether I was meant to go back to social work and do it from a different direction so I thought at the time out of frustration that perhaps this wasn't the role that I should do um, in hindsight I received so much overwhelming support from across the city as far as people saying no don't stop yes you're pushing but you're pushing for the betterment of the community please don't stop doing that and it was that overwhelming support that made me realize that this was a good role for me and this was something that I needed to keep doing so that's when I decided yes I am going to run again got it so, so, so I want to ask you another important question which is what do you believe is the role of uh, for say a war for council that's a very big question because <laughs> the reality is is that as a Ward 4 councillor you're representing the Ward 4 community but you're also representing all of the citizens of Burlington because we're a city councillor as well and we're regional councillors wow. so the role is beyond just a Ward 4 councillor I think it's important that we have the wards because that allows people to know their single representative that they can go to for neighborhood issues um, so that as far as answering your question in the role of a Ward 4 councillor specifically, it's to listen to and advocate on behalf of the needs of this particular community right. in context of the bigger city and in context of the bigger Absolutely. region. Because well, one of the absolutely. challenges if a councillor is only going to look from a Ward perspective is we end up with these little fiefdoms where you know the, the needs of Ward 4 may not be in, in uh, may not be complementary to the needs of Ward 5 or the needs of Ward 6 and then yeah, you have councillors working at odds with each other. So while we need to advocate on behalf of these communities that we represent, we also need to be coming at it from the city as a whole. Burlington is changing so fast in terms of the diversity, the multiculturalism. How do you champion diversity and multiculturalism? The increased diversity in Burlington and the multiculturalism that you talk about is beautiful. It's beautiful. Burlington has needed this for a long time. For a long time, Burlington was a very homogenous community, and I don't think that that represented who, what Canada is and what we need to be to be a healthy community. So I love our multiculturalism and our diversity. What I bring to that, as far as my role as a counselor, is that I'm often in a position to be interviewing uh, who's going to represent us on our citizen advisory committees. Those citizen advisory committees are our groups that we go to for advice when we're looking at new policy and procedure. We run it by be it the seniors advisory the transportation advisory the um, you know diversity and inclusion committee and what's important to me is that when I interview for those that it's the first priority is that we are hitting every demographic that we possibly can and if we feel as though we're not getting applicants who represent the diversity in Burlington we'll reach out to some of these multicultural groups to invite them to please apply before we fill those positions we'll seek out opportunities to try and engage you know all members of the community all demographics age multicultural you know 
uh, yes, economic yeah. diversity Absolutely. every way to make sure that we're getting the voices of everyone when the, when it comes to decisions that council's making. Yeah, and that's exactly what I wanted to hear because uh, in order to provide any level of service and support, you got to listen to them. Yep. And various background uh, people uh, of different demographics have different needs. Yes. Uh, it could be a cultural need. It could be a need as a result of education new in this country uh, or just uh, new as a whole. Uh, so to understand the needs and to listen to them, absolutely important. And I appreciate you doing that. And transportation comes in the forefront of everything. Yes. When my kids see these buses going, they say, why don't we have electric bus? Or why are we running empty buses? Uh, but more, more than that, there's a need for public transportation. So what, do you, what is your view on public transportation and the needs and the environment as a whole? Yes, so with 40% of our carbon footprint coming from cars on the road, combine that with people telling me every day and asking, please help to get cars off the road. The congestion is unbearable. The only way to get cars off the road is to offer people an alternative. Absolutely. And that alternative has to be affordable, it yes. has to be reliable, yes. it has to be efficient, it has to get you where you need to go in a similar time that you would take your car. That's yes. the only way that we're going to get people to leave their cars in the driveway. Yes. Getting people on public transportation is crucial to the environment and crucial to our traffic congestion. I firmly believe that and I'm a huge supporter of, of increasing our public transportation system. Yes. The answer to running these empty buses, Yes. that's unfortunately something that we need to, uh, cutting buses is not going to be the answer. I understand. Increasing ridership is the answer, so Absolutely. filling those buses. Yes. If that means offering incentives to people to yes. try using the bus, yes. if it means training and educating youth and offering youth free transit passes so I that agree. the next generation is they hugely, agree. you know, that's what they assume is going to be their mode of transportation. Yes. Making sure the youth are educated so that parents feel comfortable with their kids taking the bus. True. Right? Um, making sure that the routes are efficient. Our routes had been very inefficient until four years ago and we got our new traffic, uh, or our director of uh, public transportation who has started to create more of a grid network and I think that's gonna be a much more efficient system. We need to make sure the buses arrive when they're supposed to. There's yeah. nothing like standing at a bus stop and thinking a bus is supposed to be coming in 10 minutes and it doesn't come for 20. Right. That's not gonna encourage people to get on the bus. Yes. So it needs to be efficient, affordable, uh, effective, get people where they need to go. We've got some new initiatives that we're looking at, like having uh, bus only transit only lanes on some of our major oh, streets yeah. Yeah. and advanced green signals for buses. So my hope is that as people are sitting in traffic congestion, waiting for five lights, yes. they're gonna watch the buses sailing past. Absolutely. And I think psychologically, I am hoping that that's going to encourage more people to consider getting on that bus and being part of that group who is sailing up and down the street. So yeah. there's things, a lot of things we can do. So Sana, um, real estate is what I live and breathe every day and it's uh, important to me. We have land that are protected, uh, you know, anything north of uh, 407 and we have, we have strict rules around going vertical housing. Uh, so where are these people going to live? Great question. Great question. That was the biggest part of the conversation that we had over the last 18 months for the housing strategy, I was very fortunate to be able to chair the housing strategy working group where we had representatives from demographics across the city as part of that working group. We were talking about how creative we need to get. And a lot of that creativity is going to come down to rezoning a lot of areas of Burlington. Oh, I see. And that does not mean rezoning to suddenly allow for condos where single family residential is. That's yes. not what we're talking because a lot of people don't want the high-rise condos. They don't That's want that right. lifestyle. That's right. What we need is creative options. We need more co-op housing. We need more duplexes, triplexes, gentle density, mid-range so housing. Trying to find creative options like that that don't change the character of our city, but allow us to use the footprint that we have because we're not wanting to go into our green space. Yes. We do not want to start filling in the green space, the parks that we have. We need more parks, not less. Yes. So it's not about filling in our green space. It's about using the housing space that we have now and just looking at it more creatively in a way that we can accommodate people in a way that they want to live. Existing residents that are already here, yeah. uh, how can they be more involved? Uh, I believe that people need to gather in person. Yes. I think that engagement happens, you get the energy, you get people build off each other's ideas. Right now, how the city engages, we're doing the best we can as far as you know, limited engagement, doing surveys and so on online, but that's not enough. That is not enough. 
there's so many neat, interesting and creative ways to engage with citizens. There's town halls, there's citizen, uh, there's the committees, there's opportunities for open houses where people can gather and spend a whole day. There's, there's so much research done on how to engage citizens in a community to make sure their voices are heard. Yes. Most of them involve being in person and yes. being able to brainstorm together. Yes. So I actually did a course in the summer of 2021. It was an eight week course on working with people. And Got that's it. exactly what it was about. It was about face how to, to bring face. people together and how to get all of that energy moving in order Let's for people get to get yes. away from the Zoom yes, meetings. Yes, please. Let's be in person. <laughs> yes, you know, yes. That's what we humans are. Yes. You know, we, we yes. need to interact. We need to see each other. Yeah. Uh, so that's great. And I love that uh, you will put efforts towards that. I so look forward to being able to bring some of that to Ward 4 in Burlington for sure. All right. Yeah. All right, everyone. This is Roshan Bazdet. I'm a resident of Ward 4. I live in the Longmore area and I have one closing question for Sana. Okay. If you were not running, mm -hmm. how would you pick a Ward 4 councillor? What would be some of your uh, decision making criteria? That's a very good question. I am a Ward 4 resident, Yes. so if I was not running and I was looking for the councillor that I want to represent my interests, yes. what's important to me is that whoever is the councillor is someone who brings integrity and honesty to the role. I am not a fan of when I hear someone come to the door who is going to tell me everything I want to hear and I get the sense that they have a magic wand that they're going to wave and make it all happen for everyone. That's not real. I want honesty. I want integrity. I want genuine answers. I want to know the truth. So that's what's important to me. Transparency. Yes. 100%. Transparency, uh, highest level of representation. Yes. Uh, and uh, someone that can uh, represent and bring change uh, in a big way yes awesome yep. thank you so much sana for you. your time uh, it's amazing to see you in person yes. uh, and uh, wish you uh, all the best thank in this you. election thank and uh, see you around